there it is finished. That's our plant today in Christchurch, which we're, we're very proud of. The key to us is investment. This is uh, getting everything placed in our new ready to, ready to eat um, area of our, our business. Um, our, all our ham slicing lines are off this now. But this here, um, I, I thought we'd just show you this uh, this tower. Um, yeah, so um, this tower, Nick and I, um, we went to IFA. Um, one of our trips, 998, I think it was, Nick, wasn't it? And um, we went to we went to Alma to look at a machine we were buying, and we seen this tower there, and uh, and we and, and we said, "Shit, what's that?" So, one of the problems we have when you're packing um, vacuum pack sausages is there's, there's quite a few things happen with vacuum pack sausages. You, you cycle, you know, we're cycling six cycles a minute, two packs, twelve packs a minute, right? And every Christmas we can never keep up. This here has the ability to do 50 packs a minute. Okay, so we've got one in Christchurch and one in Auckland. Uh, you know, they're, they're a million dollar investment. But at the end of the day, uh, it enabled us to to break through. Now, never this was the f you talk about technology. This has never been done in the world. We're the first company to pack sausages in a sealed bag with gas it's in the world. So uh, we're quite proud of that fact. We, uh, it was a big gamble for us, but we couldn't. We were letting our customers down, so we had to do it. Um, it's now revolutionised the, the, the pre cook market. Um, so uh, we, we uh, Basically, um, and we still follow tradition today. The other thing that that was great when you when you when you pre-cook when you uh, vacuum pack sausages, you've either got to put extra filler in to keep them to keep them from leaking, or you put your normal sausages in there. They leak like hell, and because of the suction. Whereas with this, we can make we can make beautiful pre-cooked sausages. And they stay in an absolute stable condition. So that's uh, the, this is the garage system. Um, just to give you an idea what we have in our plant, this is the garage system uh, for massaging, and uh, this system here enables us to suction um, after we've um, after we've done the curing. We suck it into the massages through load cells, and then it sucked out again into silos, and um, and then we can get carry on with production while we've got we've got our uh, products stacked in the silos, and then that goes out to our our filling stations, and then onto the um, smokehouse and what have you. This is just part of our bacon line. Um, we uh, we've got uh, we've got four bacon four bacon lines and um, the huge investment in in, um, in, in two of them um, the slicer for our sake's over over a million dollars the um, the, the slicers uh, they have um, they have a, a, they they measure the log. On and, and they and they take a photo of the log. They work out how many slices um, they're going to get out of it for 400 gram packs, and uh, and uh, which which helps us with our with our yield. So um, it's uh, all, all very technical. Um, this particular run here, where we're doing our, our free farm bacon, the free farm bacon. Um, it had, took us uh, 12 months to perfect. One of the things that were different that Murray spoke about before with um, bacon being watery in New Zealand and not in Australia. In Australia, they cook their bacon to 72 degrees internal, so they cook it to hand. And that's why um, that's why it's different in Australia when you, when you cook it in the pan. In New Zealand, the New Zealand still likes um, green bacon or raw bacon. 
and that's, that's the difference, okay? Uh, the, it, it, we, you know, uh, so the yield, the yield in our bacon is less or no different to Australia. It's just that it's raw. Uh, you, you know, we, we have about 5 to 6% yield in the, in the product. Okay, um, we, we, have, uh, we have an R&D team which consists of food technologists, uh, butchers and, um, and, and a helper in there and then um, we have a, 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 another person there who's a chef uh, which, um, and she's a, a female which gives us, um, uh, she, which is a, she's a, you know, gives us the consumer angle as well. So we've got a good balance in there, and um, uh, and and in the last wee while we're, we're the new product development is picking out uh, plenty of new innovative products. And at the end of the day, it's all about the consumer. You know, it's about what the consumer wants, the what what the consumer is looking for. We're we're makers for the consumer. The supermarket uh, supermarket really is a, is a marketer or a holder of product for the consumer. We're all about all that step all the way through. It's got to be it's, it's got to be pulled by them and pushed by us to buy the product. Five minutes, thank you. Okay. Um, this is our. Shaver line, which has grown dramatically over the over the time, we're the first New Zealand to have shaver packs, and um, this is uh, our, our new sausage line that we've uh, that's gone in recently. We're, um, we're we've got efficiencies with loading loading our, our skins onto the uh, onto the funnel, and it rolls around like a Gatlin gun and uh, carries on filling. This is uh, our, our unit for making our meatballs into, um, into our trays. And uh, we've just installed uh, a Formax, a new, a bigger one than this, a Formax paddy line for, for because this part of our business is growing. And uh, so, it, it, so it, it, it'll handle the retail and uh, quick service um, restaurant business. Uh, Everything, everything's traced through the plant, the, the, it, from department to department, when the pigs come in, everything's scanned all the way through, right through to the warehouse. This is how that works. Um, the external view is here. We are, we are live with our customers' warehouses, and we have a team of planners in there who um, watch uh, pellets being sold, and then they draw, this, they, they draw an order against the, the plant to replace that pellet. And that goes all the way back with our planning team, and we uh, and and then that rolls back through the park through that other system you've seen. Uh, we visit um, Batsanuga, where we visited um, uh, looking at shelves and looking at different types of packaging. And international trade shows uh, where we've uh, where we're going to get ideas. And uh, our brand, brand investment with our, um, what happened there, um, this is quite important, this, the, the, we, we ended up with everybody copying our packaging. And um, so we went to, um, at Dow Design, Dow Design do all our packaging work. We, we said, right, we need a brand order. We had a brand order. We found um, that we needed to be another step above everyone else. We need to unclutter our packaging. And this was the start of that. We threw everything out the window, and um, you saw our logo before. It's now this one here. Um, we the investment to do five about 500 SKUs, uh, do all our trucks, do all our packaging, a point of sale, rebrand all our signage, rebrand all our buildings. We'll probably spend about three million doing this, and it's. Uh, our shaved meats in a cluttered market, that's lifted sales in our shaved meats by 20%. And the one I showed you before, the bacon, that's, that's up, that bacon is up 29%. Um, uh, 
and uh, here's our sausage offering, totally different to where we were before. And, uh, and um, yeah, so uh, we're, uh, everything's continuing to grow very well. We, uh, we actually, we actually sold the, the in, in, in sausages. We actually sold the, the week prior to um, to Christmas. We sold over six million sausages. So I'll give you some idea what we're selling. Yeah. So that's that's it, guys. Thank you very much.